right, so everybody, we can take a tinfoil hat off uh, for a few <laughs> seconds. But yeah, that that's um, it doesn't take much to get down the conspiracy road in this whole endeavor because sometimes, you know, if you turn on CNN, it's it's doomsday every day. I got to the point where let's turn the news off, you know. Yeah. And then when the protests and stuff is going on, then I, I will you know tune in to see that to see what's going on and stuff, mm-hmm. but. I just got to the point, not a dance, where I'm just tired of hearing a bunch of negative news. I got it, you know, if I'm gonna watch something, mm-hmm. you know, and I would like to do a podcast on negativity versus positivity in your life and being around stuff like that one day. But I just basically got it. It's like I can't take in but so much negative stuff. It's like it's just too negative. Right. And and you're right. If you if you listen to well, I look at MSNBC as being far left, right? So if you listen to MSNBC, then it's, you, you know, <laughs> it's, it's really, 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 really bad. If you listen to CNN, it's still bad. If you listen to Fox, who's far right, you have nothing to worry about. Right. You know, but even now, then this when why you know things are bad. Because Fox, even Fox News is asking the president to wear a mask. Yeah. When when Fox News says, <laughs> "Mr. President, right, make America," he, he no, they they didn't say make America great again. He said, "Oh, mask America." They said, "Mask America great again." Yeah. So when Fox News starts promoting it, that tells you somebody is is really thinking that these numbers are accurate. Uh, but again, you know, I know people have COVID um, fatigue. I know people want to go to the movies. They want to go bowling. I have COVID fatigue myself. You know, uh, I, I mean, I like doing stuff. I like sports. I'm, I, you know, I can't imagine a fall without me going to, you know, see my college team play football. Right. I can't imagine not seeing my college team play basketball. You know, that's my, that's the highlight of the fall for me is knowing I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I can't imagine not going to at least two professional football games. You know, that's, that's kind of like, that's my thing. Right. Um, and so right now I'm depressed. I can tell you right now, I need some Valium cause I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I, I know the NFL will probably have their season because those guys are on the contract, mm-hmm. but I just hope they don't, I hope college football does not take place because I think it's too much of a, of a risk for the players, and then you're putting, how can I say this? They have a choice mm-hmm. to play or not play. But right. the difference is, if you don't play, you've lost your scholarship. And for a lot of those guys, that's, you know, they their athletic ability gave them a ticket mm-hmm. to be able to get a good education. Yeah. And I don't want them to feel like, well, I got to go and risk myself mm-hmm. to keep my education. That's not fair. Somebody that's an NFL, you can pay, you know, the minimum of six hundred thousand dollars a year. You on contract if they have a season, okay. Well, see, and this is where I say this is just me, me person. This is why I say we are not looking at this thing right. Okay, I'm gonna give you two reasons why I say that. Uh, one is because I'm depressed, so I'm gonna <laughs> say that out front. Okay, <laughs> now I see I'm supposed to be in Washington D.C. right now. Okay, okay, because I have tickets. To the Nationals baseball. <laughs> You're a season okay. ticket holder. I'm a season ticket holder, but I get a mini, a mini pass. Okay. Okay. Uh, they ain't refunded that one and dime to <laughs> us. Okay. We haven't got that one dime refunded. You know why? It's because the baseball season is going to go, but it ain't going to go with people in the, you know. Right. So we don't get the money back. Okay. Because the tickets say non-refundable. Yeah. Right. Now, so that's one thing. And here's the second thing I'm saying this. If you play football, you wear a helmet, right? Yeah. How much more will it take to put something in front of that helmet so you have a mask on? We are, I'm just saying. Yeah. Why, why, and that's what I'm saying. Why hasn't someone just made it more innovative and just said, let me make the football helmet so that even though you're huffing and puffing, that the... The, the impact of that won't adversely affect you because it'll be going and hitting, you know, right, right. You know a screen of some sorts. You know, 
You ever you ever seen pilots when they fly like the F F fourteen? Right, right, right. And and they got that whole thing on their face, but they right. see clearly out the window, right? right? I mean, why couldn't they just fix it up so you got some kind of valve on where you know it it it, it exhausts out the back of your helmet or it exhausts into some kind of filtering system? Yeah. Just make helmets like that. Then you could play football. I mean, you may not have people in the, in the audience, so we still would have lost our money on them tickets. <laughs> and I still wouldn't right. be able to go to them games, right. you know, because, you know, even though, you know, well, as you know, you know, you go to games too. Even though you can see more of the game on TV right. than you can see in the stadium, it's just something about that ambiance right. of and being plus, in And the plus, stadium. if you really know football, there's, there's not a whole lot that you, you miss a whole lot, I should say, by watching it on TV. You don't see a whole play like the formation like happen versus the defense when you're watching on TV because it's it's tight framed. You don't mm-hmm. see defensive backs them going back and forth unless they change the angle. Right. You yeah, because they focus in on certain areas. Right. So I, I definitely and then well, when I'm in the game, I see less. How <laughs> you see you less? Know, because it ain't just the game I'm focusing on. You know, it's the guy beside me. We sitting there talking. Yeah, right. man. You right. know what? I'm sick of so and so and so. You know, doing this right, and doing. Right. You know, I'm just. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that. Then you know, I'm watching the chili just a little bit. Uh, so for you Christian folk, I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> they right down there in front of right me. In front. <laughs> see, when I'm watching it on TV, I don't see the you don't cheerleaders. See the cheerleaders. <laughs> Until they cut the commercial. They always, right, they, yeah. right, they're paying to them. But see, when I'm in the game, I'm, mm, <laughs> wow, mm, yeah. Okay, then I get my mind back on the game. Okay. <laughs> you know, oh, man. And if I'm at the game with my wife, I can tell you, listen, we got to go up for popcorn because she don't want the popcorn that the vendor bringing down. So we walking around the stadium. Right. And then when you're walking around, there's always something going on. You know, yeah. they got a little band playing over here. You know, yeah. this kind of thing going on. They got a little juggler over here. Right. And somebody over here acting foolish, and you watch them throwing up. And those kind of, you know, by the time you do that, right. 10 Hope, minutes going by. Right. A quarter, quarter might have went by. <laughs> quarter might have gone by. So it's yeah. all, it's, and it's like the tailgate, you know, the tail, tailgating stuff. Because there's sometimes I will say I have missed the first quarter, right? Just because of what's happening outside. outside. Yeah, you know, especially if I go to a, a, a game where you know it's not real cold. You know, the way the the way the Coach Stadium, the way the Lucas Oil Stadium is set up. You know, and the same thing when I go to in Atlanta because of the way the stadium is set up, they have so much stuff going on outside. It's like you could stay outside the whole day and ain't paid not one dime. Right, just pay for the uh, tailgate pass. Right, and just you enjoy done. yourself. Even if you didn't tailgate yourself, you know, I mean, because of what they've been doing, you know, the right. entertainment. They have, you know, they have singers outside. They have all this stuff going on because they're entertaining the people that got a tailgate pass. Right. <laughs> you, you know, so anyway, I, didn't, I know they ain't got nothing to do with COVID-19. How but it, it actually does, because that's going to be a major yeah. Hit to like you said for yeah. you know, like yourself you you about to go into depression because yeah. if well you, even if they have a season we pretty much know everything you just mentioned mm-hmm. probably will be shut down right they they won't have the tailgating like they normally have it right and even I don't think they go I think they will do like basketball and baseball see have basketball and baseball it's in a bubble no right. fans yeah you know it's like I'm, to me personally what what do I care. I'm just saying it's me. What do I care about you having a season in, with no fans? Yeah. I, That's just so they don't have to get that money back. That's all. And I, I'm going to tell you like this. For real basketball fans, if the season happens in a bubble, because a lot of stuff you don't hear on the court because the crowd is there. Now we're going to be able to hear plays call. you be able to hear the trash talking. It's, mm-hmm. it's going to be the, like how back in the day, when when playgrounds was plentiful, mm-hmm. you could just walk up to a playground, see some guys playing ball, and right, see some right. really good talent and trash talking mm-hmm. everything. Then like this guy didn't make it because he, you know, he got locked up in high school, but mm-hmm. he was he was about to be all American. And but now he twenty five on the court dunking on people like, and you seeing like real good athletic ability right, up close, yeah. and you being able to hear everything. So I'm thinking we could get something similar to that. Some of the players are, I think, happy 
or used to that because they came up in AAU, where you mm-hmm. play games in a small gym and want a big crowd, but you played against highly talented people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we could get a good uh, baseball. You know, me personally, a baseball game, this this is a baseball game for me. I want to get my hot dog. I want to get my soda, right? I don't want to sit nowhere where I got to pay attention if the ball is going to come towards me or not. Mm-hmm. And I just want to be able to zone out and then tune in in the seventh inning. If it's close, I stay. If it ain't close, I'm out. Well, uh, see, that's the thing to me that I'm, I'm going to missing. See, because like when I go to a baseball game, I normally stay in the club, you know, the club level in the restaurant. And that's where I'm watching the game from. Yeah. You know, I can still see the game. That, that's usually, you know, at, at an outfield post somewhere. Normally it's near right field, you know, where I can see the game, but I'm sitting there in the air conditioning <laughs> and, I'm, you know, I'm going to the buffet. Right. And I'm watching the game and I'm chilling out. I mean, certainly I could do the same thing at home. You know, I could set up me a buffet at home. And but it, it ain't the same. It, at, it ain't. It, it's, right. Yeah. It's hard. To, my wife, she's never been to a baseball game. It's hard to explain the difference between watching baseball on TV versus being at the end. It's a completely different experience. That's what I'm saying. And see, to me, it's the same with every sport. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I like basketball. And, I, and I, sometimes I'd rather watch a game on TV, you know, like you say, because then you get the purity of it, you know. Right. But then there's sometimes the fans, to me, make the game. <laughs> right. When you listen to them doing stupid stuff or saying stupid stuff, you know, right. when you sitting there watching them act like purity fools, Sometimes that makes it that's that's, that's fun or right. funny to me. So right. that kind of make and you you go to a football game and you see all the different you know you know the different uh, costumes yeah. that people are wearing to the games. You know that atmosphere. See all that stuff is going to be gone because of COVID nineteen. You know and so and and then too it's just a matter of getting away. Yeah. You know just getting away. You know, um, familiar. You know there's, there's a quote that says. Familiarity breeds contempt, right? And and you know, being around the same person uh, for three hundred sixty five days, <laughs> <laughs> you just need to get out. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, you just need to get out. Uh, so, but anyway, that, that's yeah. Because you ain't lying about that. Because uh, even though me and my wife basically we work together and stuff, we spend all the time together. But mm-hmm. it seems like with with COVID hit. Nothing really changed for us, but now the fact that, like, I haven't been to Roanoke, where my other business is at, mm-hmm. and spent like a week there, mm-hmm. you know, because I just I didn't really want to stay in the hotel and I didn't want to, you know, bother anything. So, but now it's like if I'm going once a month for weeks at a time for like a week, mm-hmm. that was a week break, even mm-hmm. though you know thinking about it, you don't really think of it that way, but it was a break. But it is right, yeah, and now. You could literally leave a cup on the table. <laughs> I know. Right. What's going on? Right. It's like, what, what did I do wrong? What? It's just a whole new dynamic. Yeah. And that that is is kind of mentally exhausting. You know, after a while. It right. really is kind of mentally exhausting because let's say if if I were to say to my wife now, I'm, I want to go hang out with the fellas. What what fellas, and how, who, who who where they work at? Are are they are, are they in quarantine? Right. Because if, if if it's people that she knows that are essential workers, her thing is, well, I don't think you should go because you don't know who they've been around. Right. You know, so you can't. You know, it's and then you like you said, now I can't dap you up when I get there. Right. So now we got to like you know, I went riding with the guys on the motorcycles, you know, and we got to we standing six feet apart talking this kind of stuff. You know, it's just a whole different right. dynamic. Right. It it ain't the same thing, and so, so really, you you it'd be like, well, okay, don't worry, I won't go. You know, because and, and and she's right. It's not like she's not right. You know, you, I shouldn't be hanging out with a bunch of people. Right who are hanging out with a bunch of people right. and, and you don't know what you may bring back home. So it just, it limits that, you know, and, and just, and, you know, and uh, you know, I know like for her with her girlfriends, you know, they own uh, um, zoom doing, doing the face thing and they just having a ball, right. you know, on zoom and they showing each other the clothes and everything. They having a ball. Well, right. I, I mean, come on, guys. We ain't doing we, that. No, we ain't on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you see this hat I just brought? You yeah. know, da, da, da. It's, it's just a whole different yeah. environment for us. 
Yeah, you ain't gonna see a group of men FaceTiming each other. Mm-mm, no, uh, I don't even want to see it. <laughs> I mean, unless we, you know, like I said, we at the bowling alley. Right, right. You know, and, and you know, but now see, we can't even go to the bowling alley because your ball touching my ball. You know, this kind of thing. It's 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 a mess. Yeah, it is. Wow. Well, um, it is a mess. So what's what is what do you think we need to do individually to get past this? Well, you know, like I say, we got two we got two pandemics, right? We got the COVID nineteen pandemic, and we got the issue of inequality pandemic. Right. For the COVID nineteen pandemic, I think the answer is simple. The president needs to lead by example. You know, you need to lead by example. And those who advise him need to either say one or two things. Either you do the right thing or we're going to get somebody who will do the right thing in November. We can't keep supporting you because if we don't, we're going to stay in this cycle for almost forever, you know, until we get a vaccine. That's a long time to wait to get out of this thing. Right. You know. On the other hand, I, my concern with the other pandemic is that it will start to die down before we get real change. Yeah. Because people are getting bored with that too. Yeah. You know, you notice that the the um, protests are not as, they don't have as many people anymore. Right. You know, people are still saying, wait, you know, um, wait. You know, we've been waiting for 400 years. Right. And, you know, now that the protests are di- dying down, a lot of mayors, a lot of governors, a, you know, a lot of um, politicians are saying, well, we got to wait and make sure we do it right. That's, that's their mantra. Right. We got to make sure we do it right. Well, um, you won't know you did it right just because you wait. Right. And the crazy thing about that statement is you want to make sure you do it right. Okay. T- take down the statue. Change the flag, change the Confederate flag, and you know what's the um, the governor of Mississippi um, did I think uh, today. So it's like that didn't take a whole lot of effort. No. To do, I mean, you know, let's be real. That's not a whole lot of effort, Mm-mm. you know, to do that. Now, when we get down to um, the systematic type stuff, that's mm-hmm. the part that you got to go through there. Okay, why is this law in the books? Mm-hmm. You know, why why are why is the minimum prison a uh, term for a certain crime, you know, mm-hmm. this amount mm-hmm. when the maximum is this amount and why white people are getting the minimum. Right. And, and why black people are getting the maximum, mm-hmm. you know, that's the part that you got to work on. And that's when you start. Now you're getting into human error because now a judge is the one doing that. Mm-hmm. How do you regulate this person to keep them from being able to do that give white people one sentence versus giving black people mm-hmm. or people of color a whole nother sentence. That's the part that we got to get to. You're right. But even with that, we don't have to keep waiting. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it ain't like we don't know the problem. Right. We know the problem. We, so if you know the problem, you don't have to keep waiting. All you have to do is put accountability. See, if you are a judge, right? In most cases, if you're a federal judge, you're judged for life. You can be locked up in jail and keep getting your money, yeah. right? Because you're judged for life. And, 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 and so judges are not held accountable for their actions. And that's a part of the problem. Why is it a judge is sacrosanct? I mean, what is it about being a judge that makes you all of a sudden um, all wise and all knowing? Right. You know, for example, you remember, uh, it's been a few years back, when a young girl goes into a, a black girl in California, she goes into a, a Korean store, right, to, mm-hmm. to, to buy a drink, all right? Yeah, and she's, she's going to pay for it, but she just opens it up as she's approaching the counter. Well, if I open it up as I'm approaching the counter, obviously I'm going to pay for it. So the Korean lady keeps fussing her. I'm tired of you all stealing from me. The girl says, I'm going to pay you for it. That's why I'm up here at the counter. They go back and forth for a few moments. And so the girl just, plops the money on the um, thing and he turns to walk away. The Korean woman pulls out a gun and shoots her in the head and kills her. Wow. Over a soda. Okay. Now, they arrest the woman. Okay. She's tried. She's convicted of manslaughter. Here's what the white female judge said. 
that the woman has suffered enough. Putting her in jail will do nothing but give harm her more. So therefore, she gave her probation. That's crazy. Yeah, but see, the judge is not accountable. Right. And once the judge does that, that's it. There's nothing you can do. Right. Right. <clears throat> to me, it's simple. See, that, that's malpractice. And, yeah. and, and, and that judge should have been kicked off the bench immediately. She, yep. They just shouldn't have to wait till a voting cycle. But that, that judge should have been prosecuted for malpractice because that's how things, like you said earlier, you know, rather than giving them the, what they give us, we get the maximum, they get the minimum. It's like the uh, I'm too rich to go to jail defense. The white boy, you know, in Texas, you know, yeah. white kid, right. when the judge says, well, he's too, he's too rich to be locked up because that would harm him. Well, just because you're poor don't mean going to jail won't harm you. Right. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's so asinine. And, and the thing is, there should be a review board for judges, just like we audit, we audit everybody else. You know, you audit finances, you audit uh, doctors, you audit, you know, people who, you know, who, who, who um, manufacture drugs. All these people are audited. Judges are not. There should be an independent review board for judges as well. Yeah. And, 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 and they should be held accountable. The same thing for prosecutors. You know, there should be an independent review board for prosecutors. But we hold them. They, they make a decision. You know, as you know, the Commonwealth attorney can make a decision not to prosecute you. Right. Right. Just like with the young girl that's got shot in her house. Right. Mm -hmm. They made a decision. Right. Not to prosecute. Just like, the you know, the black boy that was black man, excuse me, that was jogging in, you know, and, 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 and the white folk followed him and shot him with a shotgun. Right. The prosecutor made a decision. I'm just not going to prosecute. See, that's crazy. Right. And the other thing that's crazy about that, if that guy that was jogging would have turned around and killed them, he'd be locked up. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. And yeah. then they would have went to go sort everything out and ask that. And then right. they would have went to trial and everything. Right. Because if he said, I'm standing my ground. Right. Because if you chase him behind me with a shotgun, I should be able to turn around and blow your brains out. Right. That's right. You know? Yeah. That's, and that's the type of stuff that needs to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm all for the, the, the statues coming down, mm -hmm. hashtag remove the stain and which is a step in, is a, is a right step in the right direction that needs to happen for America to heal. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the issue, um, with this country is black people still believe in the concept of America mm -hmm. where even the people that have founded America, the ancestors, the founders of America are not going by what is actually in the constitution. You're it, right. It's, it's, they're not following mm -mm. the, the, um, the, I ain't gonna say the, the law, but the constitution. No, you, you're right. Right. They ain't yeah. following the law. <laughs> it's like, it's clearly it's right there. Now, uh, you know, when you study history, they say the founding fathers wrote the constitution the way they wrote it so it can grow with the country. Like, so you can still make changes and stuff to where if things mm -hmm. change, you can grow. Mm -hmm. But it's like we make changes and then it's not always all the way a change. Like Jim Crow laws, like when we, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Crow, we're still suffering, in my opinion, from Jim Crow from the 50s and the 60s, even mm -hmm. in 2020. Er earlier, even from... When they first started coming out with them Jim Crow laws yeah. right after Reconstruction, our prison system is crowded because of Jim Crow laws. And yeah. that mindset hasn't changed, right? Because you think about what they did. When they freed the slaves, that means they lost free sla they lost free labor. Yeah. So, you know, even even like when we talk about Juneteenth, right? E even even when the general came and said they were free, the general still said to them, but you can't be, a, if you're a vagrant, right. you, you know, you, you can get locked up. Wait a minute, you just freed me. Yeah. Now you tell me if I don't get a job, I got two choices. I can go back and work for the same person that used to be my slave owner. Right. Or I'm going to get locked up because I don't have a job. So he going to kick me off his land. That means what? I'm a vagrant. Right. If you lock me up now, what happens? Now the sheriff just gives me back to that same person and I'm working for him on a chain gang. Yeah. So now it's free labor. And that's what they did back in that time, right? So the jails were filled up with black people 
who then will rent it back out to the, to the um, farmers as, as labor. Yeah. And, and, and that process of locking black men up in, in huge numbers, just like you said, it's still prevalent in 2020. Yeah. You know, the ironic thing is like if you, you read through the Bible, there was servants and slaves throughout mm-hmm. all through the Bible. Mm-hmm. But one thing about the servants, they worked for a certain number of years for a certain item, whether it be a wife, you mm-hmm. know, the, the guy's daughter. He said, oh, you can have my daughter after you work for me for seven years. I forget the story. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I am not a deacon mm-hmm. or a minister, right, right, I, right. but there, I remember the story about the um, Jacob. Right, right. <laughs> you know, he worked all that time. He's like, well, I'm yeah. done. He's like, right. well, yeah, you can have this one. Right. He uh, gave the ugly one. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, you got to really love a woman, boy. For seven years. Right. For seven years. <laughs> Worked for seven years. But but it was a little different, though, right? Like yeah. you said. Because even the, sl- even, even the uh, slaves were not treated the way Africans were treated as slaves. Right. Because even slaves had rights in, biblically. Right. You know? And, and so it was a different dynamic. Uh, they were treated humanely. Right. You know? Uh, um, and in, in, in our history, we are the only group of slaves that were treated as animals. Yeah. There have been slaves ever since time. Right. But we were treated as animals and as subhuman. Those people did not treat people as subhuman. You know, because right. they, they treated them as if they were they just happened to be, um, uh, I guess, financially, that they owed a debt. Right. And that you had to pay that debt. And you could pay the debt by, you know, and take, take this person. Right. right. Or I work for you in servitude. So it was, it was a different dynamic. Because, as you say, even with the Constitution, we were not considered human. Right. So, therefore, the Constitution didn't apply to us. And then when they finally did say, you know, we were free, they said, well, you're not a whole human. Right. You're three fifths of a human. Right. You know, which is asinine. But right. That, and, that, and that's that thing. So that, that pandemic is a part of like, I mean, that's why I say it really is like a virus because it has permeated our society. And, and even now as we try to transition and try to move over, you know, we, we, the, the pendulum is swinging because you went from right after George Floyd's death to let's get solid equality. Let's stop police brutality. Right. And now the police are saying, wait a minute, we're, we're the victim here. Not the people that got shot. We're the victim. And so now the pendulum is swinging to the other way ag- again. Right. You know, and it's crazy because it's like you have people resigning mm-hmm. because you know, of a chokehold. I can't, I can't apply the chokeholds. I'm, I'm like, listen to yourself talk. So, but mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm happy because if you want to quit your job because you can't bust heads anymore, mm-hmm. you was not right for the job in the first place. Absolutely. You came into it wanting to just beat up on people. You know, if you want to go shoot at somebody, the military go over there Okay, Mm -hmm. and get trained and Mm -hmm. go overseas to fight in conflicts. Right. If that's what you want to do. Right. But don't join the police force. (laughs) Don't join the police force, you know, to do that. That makes no sense. And I and, and I'm, you know, a lot of people that's in the military may disagree with me on this, but I feel like if you come in from the military and you want to get a job as in law enforcement, you need to go through a psyche valve, mm-hmm. all these other evaluations to make sure you are okay. Because if you busting down a door in Afghanistan and, and, and children are holding guns, you got to be on guard the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then you get out and then become a police officer. It ain't like the mm-hmm. switch is turned off. Right. I, I don't think anyone should be a police officer that has an authoritative attitude. Yeah. You know, and that's what a lot of them want you to do. They want you, they want to be able to talk junk to you but you not talk back to them right. and they'll tell you, you know, I'd have told you to shut up. If you open your mouth <laughs> one more time, right. then I'm going to arrest you. You know, right. no, that's not the way you deal with human beings, you know? And, and so, you know, they, now you, the, the pendulum is swinging where the police are saying, like you said, they're resigning because they're saying we are not appreciated. It, 
you didn't get that job to be appreciated. Yeah. You got that job to pay your bills. I'm so sick of hearing policemen whining about them not being appreciated. When the last time they said they appreciate the garbage collector? Exactly. But that person still picks up the trash. Right. They don't say, well, you know what? Y'all need to appreciate janitors more. That person still sweeps the floor. Right. You know, we're not paying you to be appreciated. See, everybody wants to be put on this great pedestal, you know, uh, that we should appreciate you for doing your job. No, that's your job. You signed up to do a job. Stop whining and do the job. Right. And that's the thing that, that, that for me, it just it, 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 it gets next to me. When we act like that, if you got a job that everybody's supposed to appreciate what you do, you know, no, you, you, that's the dumbest thing I heard. I'm the criminal. You arrested me and I'm supposed to appreciate you. Right. (laughs) You know, right. It's not like I'm asking you to give me a ticket. I'm supposed to appreciate you because you gave me a ticket. No, no, that should not be a part of it. There I'm, I, I am a pastor of a church. Do you think that every sinner appreciates me? No. 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 Even every Christian don't appreciate me. And they have (laughs) told me they don't appreciate me. Okay? But that's not why I do what I do. Yeah. So stop whining. Man up. Woman up. Do your job. Yeah. Don't resign just because people said they don't like you. Yeah. That says too much about you as a police officer. To me, that speaks to the heart of what you really are as a person. Yeah. If just because people say they don't like you, you resign. You know, yeah. that, 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 the, that's the coward's way out. Right. So I'm saying to everyone in law enforcement that may be listening, do not be a coward because people don't like what you have done. If you want people to be on your side, you have to show them that you understand compassion, you understand their problems. It don't mean you won't lock them up for committing right. a crime. Right. They should know that, but they should know that you're going to be equitable in how you measure out justice. You know what's funny? They get mad because, you, oh, you're treating all cops for the few bad ones that's out there. And I want to say back to them, you treat all black people bad for the few bad black people that do things that's not right. Absolutely. So that's how it feels. Mm -hmm. But you can take off your uniform. Right. I can't not be black. You've been black long as I've been knowing you. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And see, that's that's the real major difference. Like, they're just now getting to feel what we feel. What we feel. All our lives. Right. You know. But you're right. That's the thing. That's why I'm tired. I'm sick of them whining. There's some good cops out there. Well, I'm good too. Yeah. But when you pull me over, you don't treat me like I'm good. Right. You know? So why should I feel any differently about you than you feel about me? It's simple as that. Oh, yeah. You got anything else before we close out? No, I guess we talked. Or no, that, that, that's two shows right there. Yeah, that, that's two. I guess we're good to go. Then. We're good to go. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. This is your host, C.B. Baker. The next time. Peace. <laughs>